Yo, what is up everybody? Almost Evil 33 is here again, and today I have another Medal of Honor 2010 gameplay commentary for you guys. Today I'll be playing some Garm's Ear Town on Team Assault, and I'll be using the AKS-74U with Iron Sight, Stock Barrel, and Extra Mag on the Op 4 side of things. So, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about Medal of Honor Warfighter in this gameplay, but before I get into that, I just want to kind of explain to you guys how crazy this gameplay was. So, as you can see, I'm playing some classic G-Town, and I was absolutely destroying this enemy team. I decimated them. I almost got three cruise missiles in this match. I know you guys will enjoy it. It's action-packed, tons of kills, tons of support actions, all that good stuff. So enjoy this game plan. Get turned on, son. Good night. Sorry about that. <laughs> so getting back into this commentary here. Enjoy the gameplay. So what I'm going to talk about today in the commentary is the f question that I've been asked a lot lately and that a lot of people have been asking lately, and that is, does Medal of Honor Warfighter have a chance to beat Call of Duty Black Ops 2 this fall? because both titles are releasing this fall, as per usual. And my answer to that is, yes, I think that Medal of Honor Warfighter has a chance to beat Call of Duty Black Ops 2 this fall. So let me explain. Now, a lot of people are saying that there's no chance that Warfighter can beat Black Ops 2, just because, look at the past. You know, Battlefield 3 did not get very close to beating Modern Warfare 3 game sales. Um, Bad Company 2 did not get that very close to beating Modern Warfare 2 sales, and God knows that this game did not get even close to beating Black Ops sales. So, really, why do I think that Warfight will have a chance to beat Black Ops 2? Well, it has to do with publicity so far. And from what I've seen in the Warfighter trailer, the multiplayer trailer that DICE revealed at E3, I really think that they are appealing to a greater audience this year than they have before. And now that Danger Close is in charge of this, although EA is in charge of marketing and things like that, I think they have a multiplayer that's made by Danger Close that appeals to more people. And given EA may have made that trailer, they're using the Danger Close multiplayer in it. And I think that Danger Close did something here that we're all going to be proud of come this fall. And I think that more Call of Duty players and Battlefield players alike will move to Medal of Honor Warfighter for a while and give it a shot. Because... I've talked to many people who are excited about it, from people who played this game, to people who play Battlefield, to people who play Call of Duty, I've talked to many people who are going to pick this game up based on what they've seen from it so far. A lot of people have seen that multiplayer reveal trailer and a lot are excited about it. I mean, it looks real, the engine looks fantastic, it doesn't look like Call of Duty, it doesn't look like Battlefield, it looks like Medal of Honor Warfighter. And it seems like Danger Close, in making the multiplayer, has taken advice from Call of Duty, from Battlefield, and most importantly, from Medal of Honor 2010. It seems like they're keeping with the formula that this game had in terms of the multiplayer, with the score chain system returning and things like that. I'll be making a video about what we know so far about Warfighter later on. And Danger Close seems to have done this game right. From what I saw in both the single player and multiplayer trailers and extended footage, I think that the customization's there, and I think that Danger Close went out of their way to appeal to a greater audience, which is exactly what they needed to do. That was the first thing I noticed in Medal of Honor 2010. I said, this game does not appeal to many audiences. It appeals to people who appreciate elements in both Call of Duty and Battlefield, and that's not good. You know, I noticed that anybody who played Battlefield and didn't like Call of Duty did not get attracted to this game, and anybody who played Call of Duty and hated Battlefield did not get attracted to this game. But it seems like Danger Close did not make that mistake in the Warfighter trailer. It looked like they appealed to both, and they did certain things to appeal to both, and they also did things to appeal to the people who love this game, like me, and many others that I know. So, I really think Danger Close took Warfighter in the right direction from what I saw in the trailer. The customization seemed like it was there between both score chains and weapons. I think the customization is going to be top notch, which will attract Call of Duty and Battlefield players. The engine, which looked beautiful, will attract Battlefield players. And the gunplay and close quarters kind of setup, I think, is going to attract Call of Duty players. And the score chain system will as well. So I'm really excited for Warfighter. I think it has a chance to beat Call of Duty Black Ops 2. It really kicked its ass at E3. So we're going to have to see what happens come this fall. But. I'm going to be really excited, and I'm going to pre-order and pick up anything I can, and I'm going to get all the information out to you guys as soon as possible. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. Other than that, I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, and comment letting me know what you think about Warfighter, and if you think that it can beat Blops 2 this fall. So I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace!